request Mr. Hussain to please come and address us. Let me uh, express my gratitude to India Policy Foundation for inviting Bangladesh or getting Bangladesh High Commission involved in the most uh, in the release of this book, the role of Pakistan Army in Bangladesh genocide. December in Bangladesh it is known as the month of victory. We call it a month of victory because just on 16th December 1971, at the end of the 9th month war of liberation, we got the, the mighty Pakistani army under the leadership of General A.K. Miyagi. There were more than 99,000 of them. They finally surrendered to the joint command of Bangladesh, Indian Army and Bangladesh Mukti Force at Dhaka's Vijayant Race Course Maidan. Now it is called Sarawati Uddan. So that was the formal end of the uh, nine months bloody war. And when this uh, genocide <coughs> was carried out by the brutal Pakistan army. I was just uh, 18 years old at that time and just got into, uh, admitted into Dhaka University. And those are the days when no youth could get uh, himself or herself away from the uh, center of the political agitation that has been going on uh, for months uh, before the actual war of the liberation started. <coughs> so you are part of that as a um, college student and university students and uh, on the 25th of March when this uh, Operation Searchlight was launched, <coughs> I was in Dhaka and uh, we were, you know, since March 1 when Yahya Khan <coughs> suddenly declared that the parliament will not sit and it has been postponed indefinitely because good to threaten that if the parliament sits then there will be bloodbath and mass killing in West Pakistan. So Yahya Khan listened to Hutu's threat. Of course, it was pre-planned. Yahya Khan also, you know, I mean, that was a part of the conspiracy that they will be doing it through Yulka Karadi Bhuttu, who People's Party won the majority in the West Pakistan, while in East Pakistan, which has already been told <coughs> that the Army League led by Mangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, they won the most of the seats except two, I guess. So it was uh, pre-planned and then 1st of March there was that sudden announcement and Dhaka then <coughs> immediately turned to the sea of protest. People came out spontaneously into the streets and then quickly it sped throughout the, across the, across the nation, across the country. And since 1st of March, there was almost every day in the protest, not every day, there's every day protest and people were on the streets, they were on the streets even during the night. And on 7th March, our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, addressed one of the largest uh, public gathering in our history at uh, again that was the race course Maidan and 
delivered his historic seventh march in Greece. He virtually declared declared the war of independence and then again he wanted a negotiated settlement of the crisis. So the from third week of March when Yahya Khan finally went to Dhaka and later he was joined by Jalpikar Ali Puttu and Bhagavandu sat with them and tried to have a negotiated settlement. But of course, he never conceded his main demand that Bengalis who voted for Aumili, <coughs> they must be given the right to rule Pakistan. They must be given the right to rule Pakistan. That would have been for the first time that a free and fair election was held and Bengalis who comprised the majority of the Pakistan population at that time, their leader will be at the helm of power, which Pakistan is never wanted. As has been said that Pakistani rulers, especially the Punjabis, they considered East Pakistan as their colony and the field of exploitation. So they would never do that. They basically bought time in the name of talks, in the name of trying to find out a solution. And those days they utilized to fly in more troops to Dhaka and in the preparation of the Operation Searchlight on the night of 25th March 1971 and we call it a, the Black Night of 25th March. The genocide that the book has narrated in fact started from that night and thousands of people were killed. The Pakistani army they targeted mainly our, they used to call it EPR, East Pakistan Rifles, which later turned into VDR and then now BGV. That was in Pilkhana. They targeted our police headquarters and they targeted the another important uh, place of uh, source of protest, the Dhaka University. And even inside Dhaka University, they targeted one dormitory that is called Jagannath Hall and mainly the dormitory for Hindu students. <coughs> and uh, as you got to know that something is going to happen because Yahya Khan and Bhuttu secretly <laughs> left Dhaka. And uh, so the words went around then there is going to happen, something is going to happen. And if that happens, that will be uh, on this night. In the evening, as I was very much involved into sort of a political protest, demonstration, activism, our leaders quietly informed us that don't stay in the university campus, try to find out your own shelter, so a group of students, our activists, about 20 of us, we took shelter in a house close to the university campus, the university campus. And from there we witnessed the brutality of Pakistan army. We witnessed the tanks rolling into the streets, the rocket launchers, um, lightening the sky of Dhaka and arson and attacks raised on the Dhaka University campus because we are very close to it and also the attacks on 
police headquarters and the Bilkana, which were not far away from the place we were hiding. Still, you know, from there, we tried to do something. We tried to resist and uh, we took preparation to uh, make Molotov cocktails. Those were the days, you know, we the students or the activists, they started learning, you know, how to make this Molotov uh, cocktails and the bombs, homemade bombs. We tried to do something, but they were attacking us with tanks. And tanks are quite new to us at that time. <coughs> we could judge automatic rifles, but tanks, you know, they even entered the narrow streets of the city, not the main door somewhere. So the whole, and all these carnage and the killings and the arson, this took place when Dhaka was placed under country. And not only Dhaka, that all you know, came to know that most magic cities, the country were placed under curfew. So after three days of continuous curfew, when it was lifted for only two hours, when we came out and we started, along with tens of thousands of citizens, residents leaving the city, on the way, we saw all the bodies, the streets littered with bodies. We passed through the Jagannath Hall, where we all saw bodies and a trail of destruction, arson. And later we came to know <coughs> that more than two dozen of students at Jagannath Hall is said. They were lined up. Some of them were my classmates also. Some of them were my elder brothers. They were lined up and killed in brush fires and buried in mass grave there. One of them, or a couple of them, survived pretending that they were dead in the heaps of bodies. So those are, throughout, since then, throughout the nine months, there have been these killings, carnage. Along with that, killings, you know, as a resident said, <coughs> then in the rapes of the women, burning of the houses and forcing people, you know, to flee for their lives to India and India, we are grateful to India that they provided shelter to more than 10 million refugees. Apart from the vital support of training the Mukti Bahiris, in full all out support to our diversion war, especially from December 3, and to start a war which ended on the entire place in the Eastern Front. So that was it. <clears throat> that was it. You know. And interestingly, what I want to, to point out here. And also the book has touched on that part. The Pakistani rulers, even today, they felt no remorse for this genocide that they have, they have carried out. And even today, Pakistanis, <coughs> they are not offering any formal apology not a formal apology for, for the deed. Rather, when our only government under the leadership of our 
current Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in the year 2010 started the long awaited trial of the war criminals, of the collaborators, the leader of the Rajakars, Al Badr, Al Sams, who were who, who, who had collaborated with the Pakistan army. They started the trial of those collaborators with the war criminals and put them a special tribunal, put them, put more than a dozen of them to gallows. Pakistanis started protesting. <laughs> They even took presentation in parliament condemning this trial and openly supporting this war criminals again. So that is Pakistan. That's is their real I mean the character they show, especially with regard to Bangladesh War of Liberation. And so I agree with one contention of the book that has been written I think at the beginning <coughs> as I got it from the excerpts that when Pakistan today on many occasions raised the issue of human rights, it has become say to us it's so ironic. They make themselves, you know, or expose their own misdeeds that we can only ridicule them, we can laugh at them. Because the word human rights or, or any human values do not really go with the Pakistani rulers even today. Because Pakistan, even if they have a civilian government today, but it is, we all know, it is the military is behind that uh, government. And this, this same, they are, the, they are carrying the legacy of the Pakistani military, Janta, that has unleashed this genocide in Bangladesh. Then East Pakistan is turned into Bangladesh, and they never really confessed to their crimes. On the other hand, they kept conspiring, having conspiracy to undo the government of Bangladesh, the government of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the government of Aumili. And it was that proved that the ISI, along with some other international spy agencies, are very much involved in the killing of Pongabund, in the assassination of Pongabund, or father of the nation, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, on the night of August 15, 1975. And when this assassination was done, Pakistan is they started their one proposal to jamaat e islami and its leader now had jamaat e islami professor Ghulam Ajam that there should be a confederation of Bangladesh with Pakistan. They started a campaign, global campaign, especially in the Middle Eastern countries, the Muslim majority countries. And for 21 years since the assassination of Bangabundu and until the Aumi League under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, the restricted daughter of Bangabundu, came to power. They dreamt of turning Bangladesh into a 
Pakistan style state, which they failed to do because the people of Bangladesh, they voted again, voted Awami back to power, and Awami is now in power under the dynamic leadership of our Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, and she has been, or her government, one of the biggest achievements, as I told you, is putting the war criminals to trial, despite resistance from some Western quarters who were misled or misguided by the lobby, which is still very strong, very powerful with money and resources. But I, we know, we have our belief that they will not succeed. I won't take much time. Thank Brigadier R.P. Singh for writing this book. And we need, we know that there are several war veterans in India who are writing their experience, who are writing about the war of liberation of Bangladesh. Sometimes I feel that they write more or they took talk more than we even write in Bangladesh. So that's a very good sign, even though Dr. Kuldeep at the beginning said many of this generation may not know the exact picture of the <coughs> atrocities that were carried out by Pakistan at, during those nine months in particular. But the more the time flies, the more are being said about the war of liberation in both sides, in India, in Bangladesh, and <coughs> we welcome such uh, <coughs> discussions, talks about the liberation war and the friendship between India and Bangladesh that was the foundation of which was laid in particular during this war of liberation and which have now grown into a stage or blossomed into a stage as we called it a very golden chapter in our relationships and we hope that this cordial warm relationship will continue and with the continuation of this cordial relationship with the growth of this relationship further we will both benefit the people of Bangladesh and India will both benefit from this relationship. Thank you once again.